So you see these seats ripped, still pretty firm. That one's a bit, all the, all the foam's gone out of that. But that's not ripped, but the foam's good on this. So possibly, see what that one's like, perhaps put that other upholstery over this back, and switch your seat base over. But for the time being, I'm gonna hoof these other seats out. The kitchen, Mrs. loves it. Um, and then we're just gonna lay them in here and see if it sits a bit better. Because at the moment, you're sitting at lower than normal range of height, I'd say. The back of your butt's lower. I'd say the front of the seat's normal, but the back of the seat's more squished down compared to Black Thunder. And the back, the back of the seat where your bottom of your back is, is good. The way your shoulders go, rock hard. So, um, we're going to switch these seats in that I've got from Dan and see if the seats feel different. Got me new Halford's Ratchet. It's too long. They're giving me a different one. So, yeah, cool. But look at the mech there, it goes in like that. It's a bit of a funky one. So, yeah, we're going to switch these over and I'll show you what they look like. So, Keep in mind, the original seats are like this horrible, well they're not really horrible to be honest, they're just dated. Um, looks like the inside of a Nissan Micro, don't it? And the new ones are just like black and grey cloth. Right, so this cushion's fine. It's obviously just a bit lax, but the cushion's still not impeded. It's firm. Uh, that one's a little bit laxed as well. A bit worse. These, this is... Uh, driver's side. No, no, it's not, it's passenger side. This is driver's side. That's a bit loose, like the foam's falling apart. Those are not too bad. So what we'll probably do, because the foam's not too good in here, but the cover's good, probably whip this seat base off, undo the hog rings on it, and then I'll show you how to switch the covers over. And the passenger side seat base will actually fit on the driver's side. The only difference is, a little extra cut out here, a little bit of a different shape here. You won't really notice it to be fair. Um, and it means you get a good, you get a good sponge, so, yeah. Um, the other thing is, obviously the backs and that are all like done up with the ratchet mechanism. It's a bit of a pain in the ass to like, you know, undo all that. But um, these covers, because these covers are a bit broken and that, I will show you how to do the covers and to be honest you can like you can whip most of this stuff off fairly easy so I'll show you that and we'll get these seats switched over for the time being whip these seats out is dead easy look two bolts there and then if you slide the seat forwards bolt there bolt there nice so yeah to get the cover off these you just like pop that up at the back undo these hog rings the cover slides off mate. Lovely. You obviously have to do a bit of um, you can pull these plastic bits up. I'll show you that later maybe. And the cover literally just lifts off. Bottom one's a bit more intricate because there's a set of rods that go and keep these folds in the material. The leather ones are three times as hard because they've got like pleats in the fabric and um, you've got to do hog rings at each, at each uh, seam if you like. But these won't be too bad. The front just unhooks. I'll uh, show you once I've got these off. Ha ah, ha, look at the grot. It's not too bad because it's vinyl floor, but there's a little bit of... Don't know what that is. Don't know. Hair of some sort. We need to put whatever the fuck goes over that. Cover that up. And it wants a couple more clips in that side of this trim. So you take the back of these off, it's quite simple. You do this, and that just kind of folds over on these. Same with this, they are sort of crimped if you like. So once you lift this up, I'll show you. open it up a bit, and then you can pull it a little bit and flip it under. Like that. That's that, and then there's the same this side but you're better off unbolting it, so I'll show you that. 
So now each runner is kind of a bit free willy. But you can get the seat base off now. So I just flip it over. That comes out. And then there's a little plastic channel. I'll do it on this one so you can see. This little plastic channel snaps off both sides. And then to switch the seat bases over, obviously this rod's a little bit shorter than that rod, so when you switch the cushion cover, if you like, you just have to snip a little, little bit of this off, but it works fine to be honest. It's a pretty neat swap if you're on a budget. Now these seat bases are just pressed steel, probably 0 0.6, 0 0.8, something like that. They have been known to crack. Obviously there's a bit of stress in these when they punch them out. And uh, particularly along here and bits, if you're constantly leaning on this outer edge, you can crack them. Does happen. But yeah, so that's all off, but take this one off. We kind of just peel up that metal a little bit and then I'm going to hook them. And just shoot them off. Seat pan, this one looks in pretty good nick. You've got one little crack started there from that edge of that spot build. The rest of it's in good nick, so I might even keep that as a spare. Call me sad, but let's just keep that. You never know. And you can see the difference, just a slight difference between the two cuts left and right. And I don't know if it says on it. No, it's not punched with an L or R. So we'll keep that back and forward. This cushion is now obviously tied to this. Oh, this seat looks pretty tasty. So, if you can see in there, there's a hog ring securing that cover cushion, which has got, the cushion's got like um, rods moulded into it, like welding rods if you like. So, it's just a case when you've got more than one hand. Peeling it off and then undoing these one by one. Okay. Look at the difference that's made. I've not worried too much about it just at the moment but I'm just going to bung them in and I'll hoover them. But yeah. I'm going to give them a good clean out and I was going to hoover the floor but there's all like screws and raw plugs and stuff halfway under the carpet so we'll leave that till another day I think yeah now I might do the door cards and something because it's quite easy to get these door cards apart because all you've got to do is obviously pop it off from the back this bit unscrews that unscrews and so does the pocket so you can actually disassemble these door cards down to just a you know, like an old school mini or something where it's just hardboard and fabric. Look at that. Dirty fucking people. Rubbish floating around everywhere. Um, so yeah, I might, like, put, what do you reckon, olive green, canvas or something. Glue it over that, bosh it all back together. It might look quite cool. Yeah, I'm going to take this one out. Look at this rubbish floating around. Fucking people. There's a bit of grot around these bolts. Now on the driver's side, the seat back cushion is good, um, but it's ripped, so we might keep the seat back and then if we're not happy with the new one, we'll whip that cover off and slide it over this frame.
See what I mean? I could clean up, but I'm not going to get anywhere. Right, and you see the seat wasn't really a bit better. They don't line up, like if the seat's sitting a bit screw with, it don't always click in both rails. You give it a run. Like that. And she's lined up. Leave this. Not the last thing. Vehicle information. Destination BB. It's a shame he stuck this fucking sticker here. When it's warm, I'm gonna peel it off. Look at that. That had been straight out the factory. Ready to go on the boat to England. Rightio. Yeah, mate, solid. I might even try. The missus has got a steam mop, and I know what you're saying, it's a steam mop, it's for floors, but maybe we could try steaming these up a bit, I don't know. Anyway, they might be a bit dirty, but they're probably going to be comfier and look a bit smarter than the old ones. I mean, look at the old ones. Piping. Nice. There you go. So... There's a little bit of tidying up to do, right? That little thing that ain't clipped in properly and, you know, I said about that the other day. I want to put another cigarette lighter in there because she's poverty spare count at the moment. Bezel around the radio. Change radio. That's obviously been vibrating, so shoved that up there. I don't know what that is. I don't know why I've even kept that on there, but I have. This is just how I got it. But, you know, I obviously want to put a little light in the glove box. Just because mine's got that and it's handy, like once you don't have it, you realise how handy it is. Clutch pedal rubber is a bit worn out. And got another one of them there. Yeah. Air freshener's still going alright. Yeah, still good. So I'm just going to put the jack behind the seats. Because that's where the jack should go. Got some dust sheets here, look. You never know, you might need a dust sheet. Mrs. might get you to go and pick up some bloody chest of drawers, won't she? So, the jack lives under there, and obviously the tool kit would go there. I'm not sure where the rods go. So if any of you guys have got a single cab, and obviously you've got the about four foot bar that goes into the jack, and another four foot bar that, if it's an early one, has got like a crank handle on it, and if it's a later one that goes into the wheel brace to make a handle to obviously shove through the back of the tailgate to um, to get the wheel down. So I don't know if they're different for a two wheel drive, whether they come in like four pieces or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> this is all new to me. But yeah, so if any of you got a two wheel drive, let us know. I'm gonna stick the jack here, and I think I've got a spare tool kit, but really all you'll need is that bar to get the spare wheel down with a hook on the end of it to do the jack. Uh, 21 mil socket. I think they do give you some screwdrivers in the factory one, but that really ain't much good, is it? What are you going to take off of a screwdriver? Like, not even the headlamps take a screwdriver. Well, the side light does, but yeah, like you'd be better off having a 10 mil to change your headlight bulb on the left hand side. If it's a Mark II, the uh, washer bottles behind the headlight. But, anyways. Hey, what's this? I bet that's a jack for four wheel drive, isn't it? This is a jack out of my other truck that I don't need anymore. I don't know. Anyways, we'll just jam that in there. But yeah, usually in a four wheel drive, I guess this is longer. That's probably what it is. And then you just wind that up to lock it in. So if you've got a welding rod, just bend a welding rod up like that. Bung that in, lovely jubbly. I might actually have a look down the field later and see if I've got 
a spare one of these and I'll just bung this in here. Can't see why it won't work, as long as it goes under the chassis. There should be six inches of green chassis, eh? So, yeah, don't worry about that for now. Just tuck it in there so it rattle. And I'm guessing perhaps there's a shorter jack or maybe a scissor jack. Oh, I'm not sure. Which then the tools will be different, won't they? Oh, and look, because you're putting uh, proper seats and two-wheel drive, you can stash your Harry bows down there.